Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fair RC's live stream. You're with me, Joe, and it's great to see you all here. Um, and yeah, nice to see you in the comments. If you haven't left a comment yet, please uh, say hello. It's nice to see who's who's about. And um, yeah, just going through your comments and um, just see that you're um, lots of people here excited to see the new LC80. And uh, that's what we'll be doing mainly in today's show. Uh, we've got a nice unboxing to, to look at and uh, we'll be um, showing you the new product from FMS. It's a new platform, so that's really exciting. Always fun to, to talk about, always gives me plenty to say. And um, yeah, it's the new LC80 or FCX18 platform. And um, yeah, we'll be doing an unboxing. We're going to be comparing it to the original LC80 that FMS brought out a couple of years ago. And we'll also compare it to the um, FCX24 platform. Um, so that's most of today's show. We also have a couple of cool deals on the uh, Batrancy tracks, which are coming out very soon, which you may have seen in the last show. Um, so I'll just do a quick hello to everybody. Hello, uh, RC Shenanigans. Cool Hawk, hello, uh, Pool, uh, Paul, sorry, Pool, um, Colin Stone, Drew. There's a lot of names here I, I don't recognize, so it's nice to see some, some new people here. Um, welcome and hope you enjoy the show. Hello, Matthew, Pete, Benny, uh, Mikey, uh, Connor Donald's Neff, or Donald's Neffy, I forget. I know it means Neff means uncle, right? So it's uh, uh, somebody's uncle. I think it's like Donald Duck uncle. That's kind of what it means, maybe. Uh, somebody told me that recently, and uh, I wonder if that's true. Um, Jeff Makovich, um, nice to see you. Hello, Anna, a longtime fan. Nice to see you here today. Hello, Hummel. It's great. A lot of familiar faces as well as a few unfamiliar ones. Um, really nice. Oh, nephew, sorry, not uncle. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, so, yeah, nice to see you all. Um, let's uh, tell you a little bit about the show. Uh, we're going to start off with the LC80. We're going to do an unboxing of that. Um, I'm going to be uh, giving you a little bit of history uh, about FMS and kind of what's brought us up to this point and uh, then just having a close look at those uh, at the new LC80 car. We're, we've got all three versions in stock uh, here in our uh, in our live stream. So I'll be showing you all three different color um, models. And um, yeah, we've got all of these in stock at fairrc.com. You can buy them now for $179.99. Um, I'll tell you right away, uh, they're really nice, uh, good performance. Uh, they look great. And um, yeah, so I think that these are a winner and definitely worth your money if you want to invest in a uh, in a new um, a new platform, uh, something new to get you know stuck into. So um, let's get started then. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a background of FMS and um, kind of what's exciting about this FCX 18 platform. Um, so as many of you probably know, FMS started off. Um, making RC airplanes and became one of the best in the world at doing so. Um, and they've got a history of about 15 years now. Most of that time is focusing on, on airplanes. Um, several years ago, they decided to move into making RC cars. And I guess you could say that that's their main focus now, uh, although they still make excellent airplanes. Um, I guess maybe they're, they're more focused on RC cars. Um, so I think that's what most of you guys are interested in here. Um, some of you maybe like both of them, but um, but you know most people who watch our live streams I think are, are interested in the cars. Um, and so the first thing that they brought out, uh, the first things that they brought out were like really high scale RC cars, um, especially like one to eighteen scale, which were about it's about this big. Um, or 112 scale, which is a bit bigger, um, and some one to six scales as well. So some really big cars, but they are all focused really much on um, excellent scale, hard body, attention to detail. Um, they had the exterior and the interior. Um, and, uh, you know, so they look, they, they, their attention or their focus was mainly on getting the appearance to be exactly right. Um, and we can't really call a lot of them 
crawlers uh, because a lot of them aren't really that capable of crawling. Partly it's, uh, it's the technology, uh, the, like the, the torque and the motor and things like that, the suspension. Um, but, but partly it's, it's because of the scaleness of it. You know? So when you've got these really cool um, scale models, often, for example, the ground clearance isn't that good and things like that. Um, so they had, um, you know, these, the, the pros of their, their products for these gorgeous hard body attention to detail. Um, they're great for repainting, you know, if you're into that side of the hobby and they're very affordable compared to a lot of other scale models that they have out there. Um, especially because of the size, they're a bit smaller than, than most. Um, but, and, and I'll just show you some as an example for that. Um, so this is the. Um, the LCAT original, and um, you can see close up. Um, we have really nice attention to detail features such as uh, the bumper, the um, you know the the lights and the um, uh, the rack, the roof rack, and things like that. The snorkel. Um, so you have all these really nice. Things. We have the lines that are really familiar to LC80. Um, you know, this is uh, that, those kind of hard lines and, and really nice um, just details that people really love about the LC80 and kind of make it a classic car. Um, and they usually they would put the um, put the battery and the ESC and everything inside under the hood um, and. Yeah, just really scale. But of course, having the interior um, and things like that, it gives it uh, that extra weight up top, which which makes it difficult to to be a really high performance crawler. Um, so you know, so that was one downside to them. And and another downside is there's not a lot of um, upgrades available for them. So that kind of takes out part of the hobby, which a lot of people love. And um, so so there's kind of uh, a balance that FMS are trying to make, and um, you know, the, with their new product, uh, the LC80 um, FCX18, they kind of try to strike a better balance between that and get that performance as well as that scale. Um, so that's you know, that's really um, it's cool that they're kind of um, they've realised that that's a really important thing that they need to focus on, um, and you know, and they're going for it. So that's that's really cool. Um, so after they released these, I'll just show you another one, which is a really cool one. And this is an example of like how you can take these scale models and you can uh, repaint them. This is a rusted F, uh, FJ45 model that, um, you know, that we, we've kind of painted over it. In, um, we took the yellow one and, and rusted it. Um, and you can just see the kind of stuff that you can do on these models. So if you're into painting, like I think FMS hard body cars are one of the best um, products that you can get for, um, you know, for anybody who's looking to, um, to paint over stuff and uh, make it um, your own style, then, you know, these really have those, those nice little attention to detail features, which make painting so much fun. And um, yeah, you can see. So this is the kind of stuff that they that they do. But like like I mentioned, the ground clearance, the approach angle, is not really made for crawling. Um, and so you know, um, later on, FMS released their more kind of performance based um, chassis, which was called the FCX twenty four. And I'll show you that just now. Now I don't have the original um, power wagon but I have the uh, bad baby one that we've repainted. And um, so this is the FCX24. And this one um, had two main advantages. One was that it had portal axles, portal axles giving it better ground clearance, um, uh, better passability over rocks. And it also had two speed. So something that's really small, it had a really great slow crawl. And also it was great for trailing because you could um, you know, put it in second gear and make it fast. And the, uh, the versatility of that is really, um, really cool. Uh, and when you consider that they, uh, the next one that they brought out on the FCX24 platform was a, um, was a monster truck, you know, so you can do this as a crawler, you can use the same chassis as a monster truck. Um, very cool, very cool for, um, for this and, uh, you know, and 
one of the advantages of it was that it performs really well. Now it still has the hard body and the kind of those scale features that you'd want, um, but it doesn't have the interior. And that's um, that's one of the key differences to it. They're, they've kind of scaled back on the um, on the scale. <laughs> they've scaled back on the scale stuff, and um, uh, you know, and and gone a little bit more for performance. Um, of course, any hard body is going to add that extra weight, you know. So it does affect the performance. But FMS is all about. I think they're trying to find that balance. We like the hard body stuff. We like that, you know, the cars that look good. And FMS are great at doing that, but we also want that performance. And so this is, um, you know, this was a real winner because it, it managed to find that balance between the two. Um, and so th this is one of the one of our favorite cars from FMS, available in yellow, blue, and red originally. And we also have a bunch of other versions on our website, fairrc.com. Um, and yeah, so so because of that balance, it's one of our favorite models. And it's definitely one where FMS realized, ah, this is this is what we need to be doing, you know? And so they've they've taken the stuff that they've learned from the FCX24, and they've now applied it to their new platform, which is the FCX18. Um, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Uh, let's have a look at some comments. Okay. So, uh, do, do, do. I'm just going to scroll back. Now, last last week I was told that I'm, I'm a bit too easy to bait, so I might skip over some comments if, uh, if I don't like the look of them this time. Um, so, uh, it says, pretty sweet. Deal Pickle says, pretty sweet. I have an old Katana on FCX 24 axles. Almost put the two-speed in it, too. That's cool. It's nice to, um, you know, I think a lot of the time um, FMS maybe see that you're doing that. And you see people are doing things like that and realize, oh, that's a good idea. We should do it too. So um, yeah, that's that's cool. Um, okay, hey Joe, hi William, hey McHugh, <laughs> um, what's up McHugh? Uh, nice to see you here. And uh, you you need a desert Baja mod? That would be cool. Um, okay. Um, I'll be getting my F FX1. So this is the Fury Tech. Uh, Viking says I'll be getting the FX118 uh, on Thursday. Can't wait to try it out. Uh, hope I got the right one. Seems like there's more hype for the FCX18. Well, um, I think it's it's really like a, a decision, a personal preference decision. You know, there's so many different um, companies bringing out excellent models these days, right? So. Um, the FX118, I think, is is more suitable for people who are looking for that kind of um, maybe a little bit more on the performance side. It has that strong motor, um, brushless motor. It has Lexan, I believe it's, yeah, Lexan body, um, giving it a kind of lighter um, feel. The, F, uh, the FCX18, uh, the LC80, is much more kind of on that scale side, but but has that performance too. So it's really up to you kind of what, where you want to go. I think for the FX 118, a lot of people may be just really interested to try a brushless motor for the first time maybe. Um, so, you know, go for that one. Um, the, uh, the FCX 18 has a brushed motor. Um, and so, you know, you maybe have a preference for what type of motor you want. Um, so that can sway it for you. <clears throat> um, I ordered an LC80. Can't wait to start making mods. I can't wait to see them, William. Um, Max Paul says, moles is no good for searching battery connector. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, thank you. Um, sorry if I don't, if, you know, maybe follow. I'm, I maybe missed some messages sometimes. Um, is the new platform frame identical to the old FMS 118? Um, it's... Okay, so so um, the actual FMS one eighteen is is interesting because they actually brought out several um, different versions. They, you know the uh, the Hilux is is a very long chassis, and um, you know then we had like this one. It's quite short, 
Um, so, so it may fit on some cars, but not on others. I just say, um, I wouldn't. Uh, you, you're going to need some extension to be able to fit this onto a Hilux um, because it's it's not long enough. And okay, um, Hilux has my sorry, I missed it. Skip down. Um, do we have a date on when we will have more of these in black? Um, you mean the Batrazzi? wheels uh it may be a little while i'm afraid it may be a little while because i think that they're they're, they're waiting for the um some of more of the uh, metal ones to sell first and then they'll make the two together so it may take a little time i'm not sure how long it will be hopefully not too long um okay and i'm gonna skip back down um my rock van is coming together great. I have some accessories and it's looking cool. So the rock van is a, um, a, a product from Hobby Plus, CR18P or, or Evo. And uh, we showed some of those in the last one. We've got a couple at the back somewhere. Um, we've got one up there and, uh, and one, I'm not going to get it, but we've got a turtles one just over there, which will be coming out quite soon at Fair RC. And OK, so let's let's go on a little bit and um, I'm going to um, I'm going to start unboxing. <laughs> so we've got the LC80 here. We're going to compare it to the original one and I'm going to show you the box. So here we go. Nice new one. Haven't opened it, but I believe it's gray. And um, yeah, it's a nice, small, tight, compact package. And they usually arrive in good condition because of their uh, foam casing. If you're wondering, we don't have a giveaway for this one today. Um, the stock is limited and we're saving all of them for, for our customers. So I'm, I'm afraid we don't have a giveaway today, but um, we, we may have one later on in, in you know, sometime down the road, you may have one. Uh, this is what you get, that Toyota LC80 Land Cruiser. Um, what does it say? Unleash your adventurous spirit with unmatched climbing and off-road abilities. Um, FCX18, this is a Toyota officially licensed product, which is very, very cool. We have the schematics on the back. Okay, this gives you a sense of the car's scale and size, and it also has all of the advantage points, uh, all of the unique selling points of this uh, car. And I'm just, uh, I'll just read them out from our website just to make sure I'm clear and don't miss them. Um, you know, as a quick overview, just scroll, scroll, scroll. Where is it? Um, okay, so selling points, official license, two-speed transmission which is very easy to, to switch using your transmitter. Portal axles, giving it strong passability over obstacles. Um, it has metal shock absorbers, which are really nice. I've tried them out already, and I'll show you them in, in just a minute. Um, metal bearings, uh, which help the car's um, efficiency, help it to be nice and smooth, and hopefully make it a lot more durable as well. Um, and it also will come, not quite yet, but it will come with rich accessories, um, which you can use to personalize your car. Um, when I say come with, what I mean is they will be available to buy. Um, so yeah, very, very cool. And so these have excellent, um, um, yeah, they, these have an excellent body, a lot of really good, um, strong parts, um, high performance parts. Uh, which you don't normally get in a ready to run okay so yeah nice foam body let's get it open okay and look at that okay first thing transmitter the last two are for adjusting your brag uh, brag drag <laughs> your drag brake settings um, and then the, the other one is to switch between different types of battery in case you need to. Um, so just make sure they're all on the setting that you want before you start. We've also got um, steering and throttle trim, um, which are little dials. So it gives you that precise 
um, you know, feeling. Uh, that's precise control, which is great. Uh, it fits in your hand nicely. It's got a nice, um, nice wheel, which uh, you can use one-handed with. Um, it's not firm. It's just got these little ridges for, for um, to help, you know, the adjustment. Um, yeah, I've never had any problems with these. They're very reliable transmitters. Um, we've got channel three here for switching between uh, slow gear and fast gear. Um, there's also a neutral and there's also channel four for adjusting your lights. Um, very nice. And let's take out a couple of little pieces. We have the battery charger. Um, we have the uh, hex um, screw and we also have uh, some license plate stickers which are uh, a mixture of Japanese and European maybe or American I'm not sure um, and anything else in here we also have a little hitch for the back as well which is very cool and da da really nice they come with these foam parts just under uh, the fenders to make sure that the suspension um, stays good throughout the um, throughout the journey from China to your doorstep and um, let's have a look so if I've kind of shown you a little bit you'll see that it's it's very 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 similar to the original I try not to get them mixed up very very similar uh, the bodies pretty much exactly the same um, there's there's not any difference there's a couple of very small differences that i can see uh, this one has little skid plates here and this one doesn't okay so the um, the fcx 18 doesn't come with those uh, you can see this this one is all um you know there's a big plate over covering the interior of the body and this one has interior inside. So this is one of the key differences. The original LC80 came with um, an interior. You can see here, it's a bit murky, I'm afraid, on the windows. But um, this one includes the dashboard, steering wheel, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, this one doesn't have that. You can see this one has clear windows, so you can see inside. This one's blacked out, so you can't see uh, what's going on in there. But if you get it in the right light, you can see that it goes straight through. Have a look at the bottom. Okay. There we go. Okay, so you'll probably start to notice a few of the other differences as well. So let's, um, let's talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so this one, we've got um, some similarities and differences. We've got the same hard body. Same wheelbase, let's just uh, compare, same wheelbase, but um, the new version, the FCX18 um, version, has, a, has wider axles. So we can put those together. I'm not sure how best to show you, maybe like this. Um, if I line one of, the, I'll line the bottom wheels up, you can see the top wheel is a bit wider. So this one has a wider, axle which is great for performance um yeah it's that's nice um and it has the same tires same tires which are called um tiraz terraz um tires um these tires are quite small i'd say quite small they're nice um and they're quite realistic you know scale have a scale look to them um, have plastic wheels inside um, and but I would say maybe you know it might be nice to make them a little bit bigger if you want to get some upgrades um, some slightly bigger wider tires might be nice and there's um, you know so these ones have the same and uh, this one you can see there's lots of space here for you to upgrade your uh, your tires or wheels if you want um, so that's quite nice. These at the moment they're they're quite scale looking, um, and one difference between the original FCX, um, sorry, the original um, LC80, which came out two years ago, 
and these ones. Um, the new ones have foams installed um, in the in the tires themselves, so it gives it a much firmer feel. Quite, you know, it's, you, this one is very easy to squeeze. I don't know if you can see that, but very easy. These ones have a lot more. Um, what's the word? <laughs> it's a little bit harder to squeeze basically um but yeah um so so those are the similarities and differences in terms of like body and style um everything else is exactly the same the roof rack um the um the wheel at the back and the ladder all of that is all exactly the same um one cool extra feature of the new fcx 18 um lc80 is that the uh, lights at the top are actually fully functional. Um, so this one, uh, the light bar didn't light up, and here the light bar, um, yeah, it comes on, which looks really cool. And uh, often people have to do work on that um, themselves. You know, when you get this, you have to find the uh, LEDs that can that can match, and uh, with a wire that's long enough to to connect it, and everything like that, and then find a way to route the wire through the car so that it doesn't, um, you know, destroy that scale look. Um, this one is already fully installed. And so it's looking good straight out of the box. Um, really nice. Let's go through some comments quickly before we have a look at the, um, the um, chassis and some of the extra stuff that they've got going on there. Um, okay. If I had to guess, no stock interior to keep it cheaper, plus save weight. And the transmission is huge in the FCX24. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's partly it's, it may be to keep down price, but I think it's also to do with that performance. Um, having having that extra, you know, this, this interior is not Lexan. It's like plastic, um, injection molded plastic. And it's, it's going to add a bit more weight up top. Um, so I think that, you know, People, I think what FMS maybe realizes is people like it, but but what they really like is a really good performance in their car, you know. And so, you know, take that out. If people don't really especially want it or even complain about it when they get it and say, oh, it doesn't perform well, um, then then why not make it optional instead? Um, so they've got a, an interior coming out quite soon, and I, I, I would guess that it's Lexan, but I'm not sure. Um, and it's kind of like the McHugh one that we had for the uh, Way Cool McHugh mod uh, recently. Um, that's um, kind of zero depth, you know, so it just looks like an interior rather than being a full interior. And it's got a driver there as well. I'm not sure if it's already painted or if it's, um, you know, you can get a clear one and paint it yourself. Um, but that will be interesting to see what, uh, what that looks like in more detail later. Um, and uh, let's go on. Um, I, I had there was a question I read about the portal axles. We'll get to them a bit later. Um, tires are new compound, are they? Hmm. I think they're the same, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm not an expert on tires, I'm afraid. Um, okay. And. Uh, Northwest RC Adventures says FMS offers the interior to buy with this rig. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is it out yet? I haven't seen one yet. So I think it may be coming out soon. Um, and I don't know how much more it will cost, but it's an option. Yeah, exactly. Um, ah, okay, it's just skipping me right down to the bottom. So let's go, go to the last comments. I'm a performance guy myself. What is the price on the new truck? Um, so this new one is 179.99, um, which makes it more expensive than the original. Um, but what you get for that is is a really good performance um, and and really nice kind of upgraded parts, which I'll, I'm just about to come to. So uh, I think the price is pretty reasonable. And I'm not sure how much the original was when it first came out, um, but they've done a lot to it and i think that it really it justifies having a, having that price um and will you sell upgrades yes absolutely if we can get some um so so that's one big question for this platform you know one of the cool things of having the fcx 18 platform is that it's 
more likely that we're going to get aftermarket support for this kind of named platform um, than we did for other FMS models before. Um, because FMS never named their chassis or never never named their platform before um, for the 18th scale. And we didn't see a lot of upgrades for them. And there's not really a lot that you can do with them um, for, for a lot of them. But um, I think for this FCX 18, the hope is that it's going to get the same kind of support that the FCX 24 got, um, which is, you know, from Trio, Endura, Puritech, Batrazzi, all going to be coming out with new stuff, upgradable stuff. And there's a few upgrades I would suggest for it. Um, I've mentioned the, the wheels, um, that, you know, wheels and tires would be a good one to start with. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of upgrades I would suggest. Um, and yeah, they, hopefully they will be supported and this will be a kind of ongoing platform just as the FCX 24 was, which is one of the really cool, exciting things about it, I think. Um, okay. The original isn't two speed. That's right. Yeah. We're going to, um, go into that in just a minute. I like the mods. I don't like to waste a lot of time modifying. I spend more time driving. I think that's, uh, yeah, every, that's the really cool thing about this hobby is there's so many different things that people like about it. People like painting, upgrading their car, driving their car. You may like all of them or you may just like one or two of them. And so, you know, the mods are great for people that um, only really like driving and, and the mechanic side and, and really not that keen on or not that um, talented at painting the cars. So um, that's kind of our um, angle for that. Okay, so let's go 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 to the um, to the performance side. Okay, so what has uh, what's the difference in performance between these? Um, the main two changes is that this one has two speed. Um, this one can uh, now switch to going at eight kilometers per hour, which gives you a really nice trail speed. Uh, it's the same as the Power Wagon and Smasher in that sense. Now I don't know the gear ratio for this, but it's got that really just like the the 24 scale cars have it's got that really nice slow crawl and also can be switched to a to a nice fast pace you know possibly we'll bring out an, another monster truck for this platform as well which would be really cool um, or something similar like that um, so two speed and it's also got portal axles um, which are great and if i can give you a little demonstration here um, it's hard to see, not on a flat surface, but um, can you see uh, here the axles and see how low down the axles are? So that gives that means that when it's climbing over rocks, this is going to get caught on it. You know, so that gives it um, not much ground clearance. Um, on the portal axles, you can see it's way up there. So the, the new version. It's, it's way up high and it's and, and so that that gives you much more ground clearance um, for getting over obstacles and things like that um, so the portal axles are really useful for that kind of thing and they're very strong they're metal gears inside so um, yeah sometimes people are not too keen on portal axles because um, maybe the durability and things like that but these ones are really nice and strong with metal gears I can't complain at all. Um, so that's the two main differences between them. And we will um, go into a couple of more uh, things in just a minute. Um, do, do you guys want to see any more comparisons between these two? I should have used the, uh, the new color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out the, the other color for the, um, uh, for the FCX 18 version. There are three colors available. And I should have been using this one. This is the one I unboxed. So um, yeah, this is the yellow version that they've got, which also looks very nice. I would say it's kind of a mustard yellow color, mustard yellow. I'm not sure how it compares to the recent Land Rover that we brought out. OK, let's have a look at the Land Rover color. I think it's very similar. I think it's this one's a little bit more orangey than the than the um, F, than the LC80, 
but yeah, very close. This one's kind of a uh, mustard yellow color. And then we also have a blue. And the, oh, let me just compare that as well to the power wagon that I've got. So you, maybe many of you have got the power wagon. You can see the color differences there. Um, okay, so it's, this one's a little bit more yellow, but very similar, I'd say, to this one. Um, and then we've got it on tracks. We put it on tracks, which are very cool. Um, this is the FCX 18 in blue with two-tone silver and blue. Um, and one of the, the differences that these ones have, which you can see clearly here, is it comes with some stickering. Okay. So these are the three different color options you can get. Uh, what do you, what, which color do you like the most? I'd love to know. For me, I'm going to say, I, I really like the gray, but this is like the original color. And, um, you know, so I've kind of seen it a lot. So I, I guess for the new one, I'm going to go with the blue because it's two-tone. It's got that nice kind of uh, glossy finish, which I think is quite cool. And I'm not really a mustard fan, personally. I mean, I like mustard, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of the color. Um, so for me, I like, I, I think this one would be my favorite. But what do you think? Um, so we've got a few gray, blue, gray, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, 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 gray, blue. So it seems most people are going for the blue, a little bit of yellow, a bit more for the gray, but mostly the blue ones. I, I, I guess I, I would agree with you. I don't think you can go wrong with the gray either. It's very, very nice. The, the, the yellow one, I think, is a, an acquired taste. I don't think it's like uh, for everybody, but some people may really like it. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting to see. I'm going to put this one back and um, let's talk a little bit more comparing it to the FCX 24. So when the FCX 18 came out just the other day, I think it's, um, you know, a lot of people um, are thinking, well, the FCX 24 is pretty much 18th scale anyway, right? So, so what's the difference really between FCX 24? Um, so let's let's quickly have a look. Okay, wheelbase. You can see this one is a bit shorter. Uh, power wagon is a bit shorter than the LC80. You can just see that difference down there. It's not by very much. It's a little bit. It's about about one and a half centimeters longer for this one. Um, but one of the, the drawbacks of the FCX24 platform is that it's kind of the, the wheelbase is kind of squished a bit, you know. So people um, who like that really nice scale look um, would prefer to have a slightly longer wheelbase and, and have bodies that kind of look much more um, scale. And, and so like having that little bit extra length, I think, is going to be popular for people that really like scale stuff. Um, the, the width here, the width is the same. You can see it's pretty much exactly the same. And yeah, the, the FCX um, 24 has always been a bit big um, for, for what it is. Like if you compare it to a true 24th scale car. So let's... Um, I believe this Hobby Plus um, is Defender. This Hobby Plus car is more like a real 24th scale. You can see it's it's much smaller. It's um it's lower down, kind of, and it's the wheels themselves are tiny compared to these ones. Um, and you can just see the width of them there's a really big difference, a very clear difference between um, the 24th scale from Hobby Plus and the 24th scale from, um, from FMS. Um, and, you know, so, so this one, I think that what they're doing really when, when they come out with this 
um, is they want to say it's 24th scale to compete with Axial. I just think that they, they want to say, look, um, this car performs better, has better features than the SCX24. Um, but in order to get those features on, I think they had to make it bigger. Um, and I think that's why we've got an FCX24 um, looking this way. And, um, you know, you can see that a little bit with the K5, um, which I've got. Um, let's get one of these versions. This one has the um, suspension installed, but but this is actually this K5 is actually an 18th scale body. It's an 18th scale body, and it's been kind of uh, put on this FCX24 slightly shorter wheelbase, which I think the uh, K5 Blazer did have. Um, but yeah, it kind of gives you that kind of squished look, and then and then because uh, with the stock suspension, this this suspension is has been upgraded, but with the stock suspension it gives it that kind of floppiness and it, it definitely um doesn't help the crawling performance um it look i still think it looks great but um that's kind of what happened with the 24th scale platform and then so now the 18th scale platform kind of rectifies that a little bit and makes it much more scale looking makes it uh longer which will help the performance of the car as well um and the, uh, besides that, there are a lot of different um, upgrades that FMS have done. So they could have just stuck the two speed and the portal axles on it and then said we're done, but they've actually upgraded a lot of other things as well. So um, you can see here, one thing that they've upgraded is the, um, is the links. Um, they are metal. And uh, yeah, you can see the steering link and they also the chassis links are, are metal, which is really nice. Um, so it gives you that extra durability, which, you know, these, uh, the, the power wagon had plastic ones. I personally, I think that these ones look a little bit fragile. Uh, I, I'm interested to see how long they will last because I think um, they are very thin and they don't look all that great, you know. So I would really like to see some upgrades for these, um, which make it look nicer at least um and okay it's got stronger servo it's got a metal servo a metal gear servo inside which is very nice um whereas this one is is plastic the um what else the one of the best things about this car is the suspension so it's been upgraded to aluminium oil field dampers which are really smooth and just feel so good. Um, I mean, I don't want to get like too overexcited about the car, but but it feels really nice. Um, and I'm, I'll give you a demonstration of that. So let me drop this one. And I, I think just listen to it, just uh, try to pick up the sound. Okay, one more time and just see the, see it flop a little bit. It will, it will wobble. Okay, and then can you hear the sound difference? I'm not sure if it comes across, but that's nice. And and no wobble. It's just so stable. It's so stable and, and really nice. So you get that um, straight out of the box. And you know that's worth that extra jump in price, even by itself, I think. And that's a really, really great thing. Um, somebody asked, will they be available separately? And I assume so. We normally have all of the parts available separately for, for all of the cars. So um, I assume that they will be available at fairrc.com if you want to buy them separately. Maybe put them into your FCX 24s or something like that. Um, yeah, that's cool. The the chassis is compared to this one, which is quick release or rapid release, they call it, and it always stumps me, and I find it very hard to um, to open a lot of the time. Um, this one is actually screwed on. It's screwed on at the front and back with, with two screws. So it's it's quite easy to take off, but it's not rapid release, you know, but but um, you don't have to worry about the battery because the battery is actually inside the hood, which opens. So this one didn't have an openable hood and this one does. And um, a lot of people I've seen on YouTube having trouble opening these because they're really quite tight 
Uh, now, once you open it once or twice, it's quite easy. Um, but like with a new one, it's really hard to get your your nail in there. <laughs> um, but there's a there's a knack to it. It's very easy actually because uh, because there's no bottom. You can just put your finger underneath and push it up. Yeah. So um, very easy to open actually. And in there you've got your battery, which is actually another um, another upgrade for this. This is a 900 uh, milliamp battery. And that gives you more than an hour's runtime with the car. Um, and for me, that's really huge because 30 minutes, which is what you get basically with these 30 to 40 minutes, I always worry that, you know, I'm going to take it out and then the battery will die. I always worry. And, and you know, and, and often it's, it's, you have to make sure you charge all of your batteries fully before you go out. And, and having that extra hassle just give, it puts a little bit of a, a limitation on your your enjoyment and and you know it maybe will be the difference between whether you go out or not with these cars um to have that extra reliability of a you know a battery that lasts over an hour you don't have to worry about it too much you know and you just um, um just go for it another thing is is we we sponsor like festivals and stuff and let people try these cars out for free and um they often say oh, we, we need to charge the batteries, or oh, we don't have enough batteries and things like that. So this will be really useful for that kind of thing. Um, and that just goes under a little strap. Um, so it's the same strap that comes with the, um, the more recent versions of the uh, FCX24, um, which is a really nice durable strap, but I've heard that it's a little bit um, easy to come off. So you may want to do something to, to kind of stick that battery down a little bit better um, if you have time, if you have the inclination. Um, so this one, let's just put it back in. And where, oh, where is the wiring on here? Sorry, I've lost my wiring. Um, hmm. Normally there's a, there's a wire it can go into. Hmm. Let me try this. Um, let me try this one. Because it's, it's a new product to me. Yeah, this this one has wires sticking out. This one, they've been tucked away. They're, they're just tucked away, basically. You can get to them. But they're just tucked away. And um, and then let me put this one on. Okay. And we'll check out the lights and stuff. Okay. So once you've uh, put the put the uh, wire in, uh, you just need to push the on button just there. You see the white bit. Okay. And you see this one has working lights um, compared to the FCX24, which had lights just at the front in these two spots. Um, this version has lights, has um, has a lot of features for the lights. Um, let me see. This is the, uh, the original. Let me get the transmitter for this one. Oops. <laughs> so I, I don't have the transmitter for this one. So I'm going to need to figure this, this one out so that I can get, um, I can get this one on. And then I'll install the batteries. It's kind of all stuck, stuck in between, uh, underneath the, the motor. Um, I don't want to break it. And that's so strange. Ah, here we go. Here we go. I've, I've found it. <laughs> um, okay. I just need to get it through the hole. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And let's, uh, that's not going in. There we go, a little bit stiff. And that's what you get with live streams, you know, it's, um, it's not always smooth going. <laughs> um, 
Okay. And there we go. Nice and easy in the end. And now we just need to install our batteries, which I did take out earlier. And now I need to find them. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe could you help me to find four AAA batteries? Just in the box. Okay, and I'm gonna go through the comments while we're waiting. Um, sorry about all the all that. That's what happens. Hopefully it's not wasting too much of your time. Um, an hour is great, only if you're not overworking, overheating your electronics. Um, now that's one difference uh, between this as well um, for the motor uh, this is a 130 motor and the um, the LC80 FCX uh, 18 has a um, uh, has a 180 motor which is a very nice uh, step up no okay um, I did take some out earlier and that's probably why you can't find them now um, just a minute, guys. You've got three. And okay, that's four. Yeah, good. Okay, let's get them in. Okay, so you need to buy four uh, AAA batteries to go in here. And um, once it's on, there we go. Somebody said there's a lag when you turn it on uh, in the comments earlier. I, did, I, I didn't notice any lag just there. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why that might be. Um, okay, let's have a look. So I've got it in first gear now, and I'll just show you the smooth, um, slow crawl. Give it a little bit of a ledge. Very nice. Pretty good flex on the, on the wheels as well. Pretty nice. And I think maybe you need to uh, push the camera down a little bit so that so that we can see the table a bit better. That's great, yeah. And let's, um, let's give it something to crawl over. Very capable. And then in reverse, I think it's, so at the moment it's on um, forward brake reverse. You can just flip the switch to here and then it's forward and reverse. Very nice. And you can switch it to two speed and it really goes, okay, really goes after that. And it's pretty cool. And it still goes over stuff, but, um, but you know, you have less control of it then. Um, and you can see that the, the hood does seem to open up a little bit um, in there. So, so just be careful with that. You might want to find some way to keep the hood down, which, you know, that would be a um, really simple mod that you can do. Um, and let's have a look at the lights. So there's so much uh, stuff recently. Uh, Tom Lee is always talking about the, um, the indicators. So let's have a look at these. I have low beam, and you see all of them come on, none at the back. We have high beam, none at the back. And also you can see the, um, the indicators when the car turns, the indicators come on. Um, and some people are not so keen on that. <laughs> but um, a lot of people like it. So uh, I'm not sure if FMS or FlySky, I'm not sure if they will ever um, change that at all, but it might be nice to make it an option rather than something you have to, to have. Um, also, if we stick the car in reverse, then the lights come on as well. And they have rear indicators as well. Okay, so that's in high beam. And then we can also switch it to, to blinkers, which is very nice. And here the blinkers come on at the back as well. Okay. And here the indicators don't work, obviously, because they're flashing constantly. So, so you might want to stick it on that if, if uh, indicators are a problem for you. Um, but I think the, the lights look really great, especially with this nice new light bar at the top. And that's going to make for some really good night crawls. Okay. And let's turn that off. 
And for this one, this is only the indicators working. So we have the option to have only indicators, but we don't have the option to have no indicators, but other lights working at the same time. So <laughs> kind of um, kind of interesting choices they've made there. Um, I'm not sure why. There must be some reason, because people have always been going on about these indicator lights, and I'm sure there must be a reason why they haven't changed them yet. Um, OK, so that's pretty much it um, for the performance side of, of stuff. Um, it has a nice weight to it. I would say um, if you're going to upgrade stuff to it, start with the wheels and the, and the tires and, you know, get some Vertrazzi's on there if you can. They, that, that will give it a really nice look. Um, the, the wheels themselves, these ones are plastic, so it might be nice to get some that are metal and, and weighted. Um, because this is a hard body and has that kind of the scale stuff like the, um, the roof rack and the tires, you're going to want to put some um, to balance that out a bit and put some more weights um, on the front at the bottom, you know, so some so over the wheels, you can use the same um, axle covers that you have for the FCX 24. So if you've got some upgraded ones from um, from Triel, for example, then you can fit them onto here. And I believe they are the same, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so these ones, um, it would be good to get some covers on, maybe just a bit more weight there. It's nice that the battery is, is at the front rather than in the middle. Um, that's That gives it a bit more front weight, but it's um, it's still is like, you know, it's still uh, quite easy to tip it when you're um, going down. I think the, um, the crawling angle is something like 42 degrees. Yeah, 42 degrees for this. Um, so that's one thing I would I would change um, myself if if I um, if I have one. Um, and then another thing would be um, the you get uh, the, uh, the 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 gearing inside is plastic apart from the portal axle. So you might want to just keep an eye on that. Um, I would change the links if I can to um, just give it a nicer look um, and uh, maybe a little bit more durability. Um, anything else? Um, the interior will be nice to have, but when uh, I'm curious, when the interior comes out, are they going to release like clear windows for it or not? Um, and then they're also bringing out some accessories to go on the roof, um, which will look really cool. Um, they've, they've got some on their website or on our website, um, they actually tell you a few things that they are bringing out for these cars. Um, so I'm just trying to find that. Okay, so they, they are bringing out three types of trailer bucket, three types, that's pretty cool. You get a really good choice there. They're bringing out a metal drive shaft. Okay, so this is plastic. Um, this is a nice straight drive shaft, by the way. The original LC80 it kind of had to work its way around the motor. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, they're bringing out metal differentials, um, the blister interior, which I mentioned before, um, the metal servo arm horn, so this one is plastic, so they're bringing out a metal one for that, metal gears, and portal axle cover sets. So all of these things will be coming out for the FCX18. It's nice that, you know, we know that they are going to have upgrades for these things. Um, I might, you know, look at if you can get some um, skid plates, would be nice for these things, and maybe some inner fenders as well. Um, these are some different upgrades I would suggest. What about you? What would you suggest upgrading on this car? Um, okay, let's scroll down. Is the new battery the same discharge rate as the old one? Uh, I believe so, but I'm not sure. I think it's the same discharge rate. Um, it's all covered up. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not going to go into it because it's upside down and covered up. It would just take me ages. Um, but I believe so. Um, and I use a small rubber band to keep, yeah, it's a good idea. Keep the battery down. Um, okay. They show a clear window on their website. So that might be cool. Um, need upgraded high clearance links. I think that would be definitely one that I would suggest too. And I would just do wheels and tires, keep it stuck and challenging. I think that's a really good point, Slim. Um, a lot of people, you know, want the cars to be like 
so good that that it just takes the skill of driving out of it right <laughs> so you know I, I i don't see it really as a big problem if the car has a um you know whatever um disadvantages the cars have that makes it fun to drive you know so uh, i mean you could just take the whole body off and um you know and make it super easy to crawl over everything but but what's the fun in that you know so if you like driving and the challenges that brings then i think the scale stuff just adds that extra enjoyment to it um and okay um so let's go to the next point i have a couple of things i wanted to to talk about about this um i had some questions that came to my mind when this came out so I'm interested to know what other models will come out with this chassis. Um, F, uh, so FMS have brought out a lot of 1 to 18 models before, the hard body models like, for example, K10, uh, the Hilux, um, so many different really cool um, 20, um, 18 scale models. Are they going to release those ones again with this chassis? They would have to extend it for sure, but are they going to do that? Um, so I'm really interested to know if that's happening and which models that FMS have already brought out would you like to see with this upgraded chassis? Um, leave a comment and let us know. Um, I'm also really, uh, you know, and also they have six by six cars. So, are they, you know, could, could we extend that and, and use the same chassis, but in a six by six format, which would be really, really fun. Um, to get a really high performance crawling, like the Atlas, for example, um, with these upgraded parts and, um, you know, two speed and things like that. That would be really fun. Um, will this chassis find its way to FMS's sister brands, such as Rock Hobby and Easy RC? Um, so that's another question, because there's so many of those cars that I would love to see working with a, you know, really high performance chassis. Um, but often, you know, companies will keep their um, their innovations and their, you know, their premium stuff onto their premium brand, and it may take quite a long time to filter down to those those other brands. But I would really love to see it, and uh, I wonder which models you would be interested in seeing as well. Um, will companies like Trial, Injora, and Betrazzi be supporting this platform? I really hope so. Um, I think that's that's what everybody wants right so we can um we can do stuff with these cars um another question i have is we've got the fcx 24 we've got the fcx 18 so what's coming next <laughs> i want to know uh, will there be an fcx something else and uh when when will that be i want to know is it is it coming before christmas or not um and yeah so i would love to know more about that um, upgrades and accessories, what else uh, will be coming out soon? I, I want to know about that. Um, so, um, yeah, let us know what you want with this new platform. What would you like? I would also love to see new bodies, of course, on this. You know, one of the exciting, I think when you bring out a new platform, I really think that you should bring out a new body to go with it because um, I think it just amps up that excitement, you know. So I would love to see... Um, new bodies on this kind of chassis for the FCX 18 models and just kind of see what what happens with that. But, you know, I think um, Traxxas have a big problem now, you know, um, their TRX4M did not have portal axles or two speed. Um, this one does. This one has um, the suspension on the TRX4M is great, um, but this one also has excellent suspension. Um, metal chassis, it's, it's got everything and it's got that scale look and I think it's got better scale look than the Traxxas does. Um, I just think it looks good. So um, I think that's a big problem for that, uh, for them. And that makes it good for us. <laughs> so um, yeah, interested to see what happens next. Um, all right, let's turn that off. And last things, Last thing to do is uh, I just want to give you some um, some exciting news about some uh, discounts and stuff that we have for Batrazzi tracks, which I showed you last week. Um, let me bring out the LC80 with these tracks on. 
um, which are looking really good. I'm not sure why they need to have a spare tire on it, <laughs> um, but but yeah, they look really nice and obviously they work really well. Plenty of flex. It doesn't get caught up on this body at all. Um, so these tracks are coming out. We have a price for you now. Um, these will be in a box with two. It, they will come with a heat sink and, um, and all the mounting stuff that you need. Um, and it will be $69.99. And uh, so you'll need to buy two if you want to get all four wheels installed. Um, these are really high quality. They've spent a lot of time on them and um, the manufacturing cost alone kind of justify that price for us. Now, I know that that's not going to be possible for everybody um, to, to afford, um, but for people who really want this, then, then it's really worth it. Um, they're not, there's nowhere else you can get these products, um, these, these tracks for this scale car. So, so it's very original and really worth it for anybody who's kind of really keen to have tracks, you know. So um, we have a couple of discount events for these. The first one is called the Track Ambassador event. Thank you. Um, yeah, Track Ambassador event. Um, so we're looking for 10 ambassadors for Batrazzi tracks. And an ambassador, basically, all you will need to do is we'll send you the two pairs of tracks for free. And all you need to do is make some short videos and photos and put them on your social media um, with a little review um, talking about them. So that's all you need to do. And um, we're going to have this event um, on our Facebook. You'll see the, the event post. I'm not sure when the post will be, possibly tomorrow. Um, and I'm not sure if that's your tomorrow or our tomorrow, but but keep your eye on it on our on our social media Facebook. Um, and all you need to do is write down, uh, answer a quick question in the comments, and then we'll choose 10 people randomly from that list to be ambassadors for Batrazzi tracks. Um, and then you can get your hands on these um, for yourself, which is very cool. Um, now for everybody else who's getting them, um, the first 20 customers to order these will get a $20 discount code or discount coupon or gift card in the box with the tracks. And they will also come with a free uh, three tool set. So three tools um, which will come included, which will not be as part of the standard set. So you'll get that uh, first 20 customers to put in these orders. The last thing um, to uh, the last activity that we're doing for this is a if you buy the whole set, which is two, uh, two boxes, basically, um, two pairs of tracks, um, then you will get a free Batrazzi motor, which is high torque, which is made especially for stuff like this. Um, and that will be going on while stocks last. So you'll get that free motor in with the set, which is very cool. Um, and so yeah, hopefully you guys are excited about these. They look awesome. And um, yeah, they're mainly made, just to be clear, they're made for use over loose surfaces such as snow and um, and sand and wet mud. And uh, they, yeah, they're really good for that. They can be adjusted, they're adjustable. So depending on how smooth, how um, loose your surface is, you can loosen your tracks or tighten them. Um, which is really nice. And yeah, they're, they're very good. You can't get them anywhere else. So Fair RC is the place to be. Um, lots of snow here. I just saw a double down, uh, Debo. Um, that's cool. You should let us know because we do want photos and videos and stuff of snow. So I don't know if that's sarcasm. <laughs> I'm not sure where you are, um, but if you've got snow, that's really cool. We'd love to see these tested out on a snow terrain. Um, and I think that's about it, guys. Um, so it's really nice. Uh, I really enjoyed kind of talking to you about all this stuff. And um, I, I hope that you guys are, are into the FCX 18 platform and, uh, you know, looking forward to see what else will be coming out on that platform soon. Um, really, really good. Um, you can order those 
Um, all of the products you've seen today, you can order it at fairrc.com. Um, please support our channel. We're a very small team and we, we, you know, we need your support. Um, we love your support in YouTube and uh, do feel free to um, share, um, share anything you, you've uh, experienced about FairRC on our social media and things like that. Um, we want to hear about your experiences too. All right, thank you very much and see you all quite soon. Okay, bye-bye.